This is Twit. Today, I'm going to show you from ground zero how to get your Raspberry Pi up and running. This is a neat little $35 Linux computer, and it's going to be a lot of fun. The first thing we need to do is find an SD card for the unit because some SD cards won't work with it. Fortunately, there's an online resource at elinux.org. So we'll go to that website, and then we'll do a search for Raspberry Pi SD card. Once we get there, we'll scroll down until we find RPI Verified Peripherals. Click that link. On the right-hand side, we'll scroll down and look for SD cards. And here we'll find a listing of all the working SD cards and those known not to work. I printed out this list and took it with me to the store, so I had an easy time finding a SanDisk 32 gigabyte card that would work. I plugged the card into my ancient SD card reader, and unfortunately, it just wasn't fast enough to read these new cards. So it was back to Best Buy, where I picked up a cheap Dynex card reader, and it worked just fine. So back to a nearby web browser, and now we go to the raspberrypi.org website. Once we get there, we click on Download to go to the Downloads page. Then we'll scroll down. I'm using Windows, so I'll look for the Win32 Disk Imager. I'll click that link, and it'll take me to Soft Media where I can download it. But you need to be careful here because there's all kinds of crap they throw on there that tries to make it look like it's a download link, and in fact it's not. So look carefully till you found the download link. Now, if it wants to install some kind of download manager for you, don't do it. Just go back and keep looking around, and you'll eventually find the link where you can actually download the file. Now we go back to the raspberrypi.org downloads page and look for our Linux distribution. There are several on here to choose from, but the one that's uh, probably the newest and I've heard the most about is the Raspbian Wheezy distribution. So that's the one I'm going to get. Now there's two methods here to download. You can choose a torrent, which is what they recommend, or you can do a direct download. I'm going to do a direct download here just to show you that since I don't have a torrent client installed. Now this is going to take several minutes to download, so you may want to take a break and grab a snack. Popcorn freshly popped and buttered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look good? Sure, it looks good, and it tastes even better. Get some now. <laughs> now back to the downloads page, and we notice a check sum here. That's a number we'll use to verify that we got a good download. We'll click here for the instructions, and if we're running Linux, here's the instructions for checking it there. However, we're running Windows, so we need to download SHA1SOM.exe so that we can verify our image. Now that we've downloaded all the files we need, we've got our Linux distribution, we've got the SHA-1 SUM program, which will be used to verify the image is good, and we also have the Win32 disk image program that will be used to copy our image onto the SD card. Now we'll verify the image by using the SHA-1 SUM program. I'll need to run that from a command prompt, so I'll click the Windows Start button. In the search box, I will enter CMD for command and press Enter, and it pops up a command window. The first thing we will need to do is change directories to the folder where our image is stored. Now we'll run the SHA-1 SUM program by typing that in on the command line, followed by a space, and then the name of the image file, still in zip format, that we want to verify. Now I'm going to copy the name here uh, using uh, Control C and then I'll come down here and paste it in the command window since it is a long name and you'll have to put the .zip extension at the end of it since it's not already there. Now there's the checksum for the file so we'll bring back up our browser window which shows the proper checksum and then we'll compare these two numbers. And they're quite long, but we'll find that they do match, so we know we've got a good valid file download. Now we need to unzip the image file and store it somewhere, and unzip the Win32 disk image program, and I just stuck it in a temporary folder here. 
I'll run that program. The first thing I'll do is click the icon here to choose my image file. And we're on the desktop, and there's the image. And the next thing I need to do is to choose the drive that it goes on, and that is the G drive. I had verified that earlier. This is our SD card. And then it's just a matter of clicking right and waiting for the image to be transferred to the SD card. Yes, we want to do it. Now, this is going to take a few moments as well. <laughs> it looks like we have success, so it's time to leave the PC and move over to the bench with the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi comes with a quick start guide, and we'll look over that and see what we need to do here. We've already got our SD card prepared, so we're ready to move on and connect things. Now we'll need a 5 volt power supply that can do at least 700 milliamps. I hear it's better to have more than that. I have a supply that I plan to use, but for now I'm just going to use the supply off my iPad. It says that it's 5 volts at 2.1 amps, so that should be plenty. The power supply connects with a micro USB cable, and I've got one of those. Just plugs in the end here. And the instructions say we need to connect everything before we power up. So we've got our keyboard, which is USB. We'll plug that in. And we'll plug in a USB mouse. Next, we need to plug in our video, which I'm going to use HDMI to go to a 720p HDMI monitor that I use here in the studio. And then we'll put in our SD card, which will act as a hard drive. It plugs in this little connector here on the bottom of the board. And there's one final connector to install, and that's our Ethernet cable. Now we should be ready to power up. Power on, and immediately we start getting some prompts on the screen as the Raspberry Pi configures the operating system. Eventually we come to a setup screen. The first thing I'm going to do is expand the root partition so that we use the whole drive. The next option is for overscan of the monitor. This one looks okay, so we're not going to adjust that. And then we have configure the keyboard layout. Well, let's take a look at that. Now I'm using the Microsoft Comfort Curve 3000 keyboard. There's a 2000 listed here, so I'll choose that. Now there are several other options here under configuring the keyboard. And we'll step through each of those one at a time and choose what looks best for us. Now after that we're given the option to change the password, but I'm going to leave it like it is for now. And then we can set the locale. Now I'm a little unclear as to exactly how the locale should be set here, so I'm going to leave that one alone and go down to change time zone. I'll choose America. And then I'll choose the city that's in my time zone that I see first, which is Chicago. Then we have the option to set the memory split, which I'm not going to bother with, and to enable or disable the SSH server, which I'm not going to bother with either. Then we can set the boot behavior, which I want this one to boot directly to the desktop when it starts. And the final option is to try to upgrade the Raspberry Pi config. I'm going to choose that option, and it'll take a few moments here to go through and do its upgrading process. After that, we're finished, so I'll click Finish, and it wants to reboot the system, and I'll say Yes. And after a while, it's finished doing all its configuration again, and it boots into the desktop. And there we have it, the Raspberry Pi desktop. Now, I'm not a Linux guy, so I don't want to understand everything I'm seeing on here. But we'll find a web browser and see if we can locate our favorite website. Looks like it worked. We'll navigate around here a little bit. Now, let's try one other thing. I'm not much of a gamer, but let's try Wormy. Well, that didn't take very long, did it? Well, there you have it, George's 10-minute Raspberry Pi recipe.